So I tend to take a slightly different approach to filler than most. While most people talk about these triangles of aging, so that an old face has a triangle this way and a youthful face has a triangle this way, I really think that tends to make people look a little more artificial. And yes, while we can do that, it's not my favorite thing to do because everybody notices is if you didn't have big cheeks here and now you have big cheeks here and people say, hmm, she just got her filler done. My approach is different. What I like to do is evaluate a face, look at a face and figure out where have you naturally lost the volume that you used to have? I like to take filler and put it where you've lost volume in your face because what that does is that taps you back in time as opposed to making you look like a different person. Often people ask me which is the best filler, but there is no best filler in the sense that all of the filler choices we have are best used in slightly different situations. So I also tend to think about filler in terms of the depth that I wanna put it and the robustness of the filler that I want. So if we think about our two structural fillers, radius and voluma are the ones that we use the most to help to build structure into the face. We can use it along the jawline, along the cheek line to help to give a bigger lift. So we think of a radius and voluma as being our big lifters. Rustalin Lift and Juvederm Ultra Plus are lifters, but not quite as aggressive as those two. This step down from that are Rustalin and Juvederm. These are really kind of the two fillers that people use the most often. They are great fillers for around the eyes with the Restylin. For in Juvederm, it can pretty much go most places in the face and gives a very beautiful improvement in your lips as well. And these are kind of our middle of the road fillers and are very versatile and we can use them in lots of different ways. I actually will sometimes also change the consistencies of these by mixing them with other things to improve the results in different areas of the face. We have two fillers that are pretty elastic or move a lot, and those are Restylane and Refine and Define. So they're great for very expressive areas like the nasolabial fold and lines in through here. When we think about lips, we tend to think about Vobella. Vobella was one of the first products designed for lips. It's very long lasting, which is great because the lip tends to be very sensitive. It's great to help to outline the edges of the lip and to work on these little fine lines. Restylane Kiss is new, will be out momentarily, and is also a great filler when we think about giving the lip a little volume whereas Vobella is really working and improving, kind of finessing the shape, the fine lines, and giving a little bit more of a refresh. Bellotero isn't a new filler, but it's still one of my favorites. Why do I like Bellotero? I like Bellotero because it is awesome in filling in fine lines and cracks. So little lines here, across through here, I do tend to use it less around the mouth, but on the upper face, Bellotero is one of the best additions to using mild neuromodulators such as Botox and Dysport. If you don't wanna look frozen, a little bit of Bellotero along with a little bit of neuromodulators in those areas really wipes out the lines and allows you to still express. Sculpture is another great volumizing filler. It's actually a liquid that we inject underneath the skin and then it goes away. But over time, it helps to stimulate collagen and will really give you a slow, gradual change. And while we typically think about fillers in the face, we don't wanna forget that fillers can be super helpful in the horizontal lines around the neck or what I call tech neck and also in rejuvenating the hands. Now we do use fillers in other situations, such as acne scars, sometimes some cellulite dimples, 
and we can use what we call hyperdilute fillers in areas such as the arms or the legs to help thicken up kind of loose skin and to help with overall cellulite. So here's our primer on fillers and I hope that helped to give you some information and help people to figure out what might be best for them.